Namnaka Jerian, working on smart sanitation solutions for slums and informal settlements. For my research, I am working to enhance the performance and increase the lifespan of pit latrines, in particular processes and implications. My research has been divided into three specific stages. Uh, these include uh, desk study, field investigations, and uh, laboratory investigations. An extensive study was undertaken on the usage and performance of pit latrines, specifically focusing on uh, urban areas of sub-Saharan Africa. It was noted that the use of pit latrines is high and constantly rising. The beauty behind this is the trend has now changed that people are adapting more of the improved types of pit latrines, so there is hope in using better pit latrine designs. However, their performance in terms of filling, smell and insects is unsatisfactory. Contributions have been made to address these shortfalls. For instance, ventilated improved pit latrines, water seal, which is popular for poor flush latrines, then the use of additives, earthworm, black fly, larvae, and all these have shown varying levels of success. From my review, it is critical that future advances to pit latrine designs should focus on scientifically guided approaches. Fieldwork has been undertaken, one of which was assessing the designs and performance of pit latrines within urban slums of Kampala. The data collected was analyzed and um, a manuscript produced, which has been published in Habitat International. Another aspect in the field work was investigation of the use of IMOs, those are the indigenous microorganisms in pit latrines. Preliminary studies on use of IMOs were undertaken and the results that came out were good. People were happy with their pit latrines, at least smell was reduced in the pit latrines to which we tasted the IMOs. No? Another important aspect in the fieldwork is determining the environmental conditions in pit latrines currently in use within the slums. Now this study involves measurement of air flow rate, a humidity temperature, some key variables that cause smell like the volatile fatty acid, hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, then also the odor intensity has also been determined. In addition, samples have been collected from uh, the pit and in situ measurements like pH, um, temperature, dissolved oxygen were determined in the field. In the laboratory, the samples are prepared for analysis. However, this doesn't apply to the microbial component. Uh, these samples are stored at negative 80 until the time in which we'll do their analysis. For the physiochemical parameters, sample preparation involved sieving of the samples to remove any substance that is greater than five millimeters, as these are not important in the analysis, after which the sample was blended to homogenize it. Following blending is dilution, so that we get the samples into the range in which they can be measured. As we all know, sludge has a high concentration of the different variables. Now in the lab, the parameters of interest are mainly COD, total nitrogen, BOD, total solids, and volatile solids. Following the analysis of these samples, and once a clear understanding of the environment in the pit has been attained, plus the investigations on IMOs have been done, then the key factors that affect the composition will be determined.